you stare at this wall all the time and you're two wins away from that destination has it sunk in that you are this close and maybe this time with a realistic shot that you may not have had before you know um the last i was thinking about this earlier um you know in 2016 when i was at mississippi state we were in a super so we did a super in 16 17 help me out 23 and 24 and each time i really believed that we were going to win and go i think i don't think as a coach you don't get this far and don't think you have a realistic or unrealistic chance i would think that all 16 teams that are you know fighting for these eight spots to go there that we all feel good about our teams um but does that mean it's easy no no there's going to be a lot of work and it'll be an absolute war this weekend but thankful that we're at home i do know that <laughs> thankful that we have a chance to do it here as opposed to having to do it on someone else's field nick with uh travis that man i don't know how to say his last name coming is you're going to have face probably top three hitters in the draft at some point this season you talked last week about not letting those guys beat you what does the strategy have to be yeah so we continue to watch video on him um he is a super talented player and he is not only does he have the ability to hit a hit for power but he can absolutely fly so this is a little different than maybe some of the other guys to where if you just walk them, there's no threat of the stolen base. It's going to take a double to score them, you know, um, the, or maybe a triple to score them. This guy is super, super talented on so many levels, and his speed is one of the things that changes the game for him because just because you put him on first base in one pitch, he could be on second base, and it's like you just gave up a double. So I think we'll have to be really careful and continue to watch video of what's the best way to attack them. How similar and different are you with Oregon State in the lineup? You know, after watching them, they, it, there is a lot of similar characteristics. You know, they have the ability to steal bases, they have the ability to hit home runs, they hit for average. It is a team filled of guys up and down their lineup that know how to work and manage their way through at bats. Very similar to us. Brian Hagan now was a guy who was the second highest ranked recruit you all had ever signed when he got here. He thought he was going to be the ace of the future. His career has gone differently than that. What does it say about him that he's found ways to contribute maybe differently than you anticipated when he got here, especially with the leadership and all the stuff in the dugout? Yeah, Ryan is, uh, is competitive and cares as much about this program as anybody on this team. And he's been a guy that's been here for four years. He has seen the continual rise of our program he's watched it and he has been a major piece to it and ryan has had a couple injuries that have kind of set him back some and to his credit what has he done every time it just keeps coming back and back and back and back and back and um, i can tell you this you look at what he's been able to do on the field for us oh just look at his numbers it's been unbelievable but maybe just as unbelievable as the type of person and you guys know the story from a, a year ago. We were at Southern Illinois and we were not happy with the way the team was competing. And I basically gave him the keys to the Lexus. I'm good friends with my buddy Rick Avar at Lexus. So I gave him the keys to the Lexus, okay? Um, and just basically told him, this is yours. You driving this dugout, it is yours. And by the way, it's a really smooth ride, but. Um, <laughs> Hey, this is your this is your dugout. From now on, I am not getting upset with anybody in this dugout. It falls on your shoulders. Do you understand? He's like, yes, sir. And I'm like, look at that, but I'm, and uh, so really, from that day on, if we need anything, if any of our coaches, if anything, I just go to him, and he literally runs that dugout. So not only is he like performing on the field. Think about the impact he's making in the dugout. Like, I'll look over and there's something on my mind. I'm like, can you find me hags? And he'll come over. And same thing with the other coaches. It's like, hey, we need to remind the guys about it doesn't matter what. It could be as simple as the turf is wet. We got to slide a tad earlier. Make sure you tell every position player, yes, sir, I'm on it. Hey, turf's wet. What did I just say? Turf's wet. Slide what early? Boom, 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 boom. It doesn't matter. Hey, somebody's wearing our pink hat. That pink hat is not allowed outside a dugout. It's a prop. That person will be ejected. Ryan, who's wearing it down there? You better got a coach on it. I already told him. I told him two innings ago. Like, he is just, and then, this is really cool. Then, he, when he goes down to the bullpen, he has to pick somebody. 
And he's got to assign who's going to be in charge of the dugout. And if he doesn't do that, then his butt's in trouble. So he like, man, he just, he loves this place. He loves this place and he has continued to serve in every single way possible. And um, no, he is not starting on Friday nights for us, but I believe he's having a bigger impact than any start he could have on a Friday night because what he does in that dugout, in that locker room for our team, it's been unbelievable. What about him being him the guy you picked to do that last so um, I'm going to think about how to say this the right way um, how much he cares he is just like, you could not give that responsibility to somebody that just doesn't care and so when you look about how engaged our dugout is and how they're locked in and how they're trying to help our team and getting fans involved everything everything he just cares so much. And when someone cares that much, you just whew, you just want to give it to them because you know that they're going to take a great deal of pride and the good kind of pride and responsibility in it. And he's done that. And we would not be where we're at without this guy because the, the impact he has, it, it goes far beyond just on the field. It goes off the field. And we only allowed during the regular season, we're allowed four hours a day with the guys. That's it. That's all we get to practice. Four hours a day. And not four hours every day. They have to have off days. So what's happening the other 20 hours? What's happening? Like who is helping lead and guide and, and build a culture and a team? And he's one of, those, one of those guys that has continued to just build and make our program better. Not only on the field, but up there and off. It's pretty awesome. Nick, you had a quote after the uh, regional last year. I, I think I'm going to botch it. But it was something like, the past is gone. The future is uncertain. The present is right here for you, and that's why they call it a gift. And I think you, you've talked about this mentality that this team has, you know, welcomed the present, and that's all they're thinking of. So is that what they're doing here this week, and how are you noticing that? Do you, want do you to, remember that quote that I said? Uh, do you want, oh, yeah, you, you botched it. I botched it. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, if you remember. Do, you, do you think I remember it? <laughs> Yesterday is history. Tomorrow's a mystery. Today is a gift. That's why they call it the present. I love quotes, so thank you for bringing that one up. Yeah, um, you know, and in especially in the day of age now in social media, this is harder than ever because a lot of times everything you say and do, it is just regurgitated over and over, and things gain traction, right? And these guys are on social media, so when that happens, it could just keep being brought up and put in your face and just over and over and over again, right? So, um, yes, we talk about that a lot. And, you know, even just from the mental side, I had a, a sports psychologist teach me something that really resonated with me. He said that people that struggle from depression, they live in the past a lot. Maybe some of the decisions and things they struggle with, that could lead to some of the struggles that they're having. And sometimes people that struggle with anxiety live in the future too much. Right, because they're just worried about what's going to happen next. And I think if we're being honest, we've all been there at some points in our life, whether it's personal, professionally, whatever. Right, we've all been there. We've all thought and rehashed things that we could have done different, and you know, we've maybe gone down a dark hole or a spot we didn't want to be, or maybe we get too excited looking at the future. So I just feel like our job as coaches is to equip them. Right, like we're teachers. That's our job is to like teach and equip our players. So. Um, one way we do it, and you guys know this, we start every day with a quote, and that was one of our quotes. Coach Amirati does an awesome job finding quotes and things, and we just get together each day and try to get them in the right state of mind, you know, mentally. But that is one that has stuck for us, and we just constantly remind them because the game of baseball is hard. Life can be hard at times, and sometimes it's easy, right? Sometimes things are just going well for you. But at the same time, our ability to move on as fast as possible is so important. And just to focus on the task at hand and then just move on to the next thing. And this team has definitely embraced that. And um, we reminded them again, uh, again of that yesterday, you know, and we, we all need reminders. So that is a quote. Thanks for bringing that up. Maybe we need to put that in there this week again. <laughs> what quote did you start with today? Um, uh, good question. Let's, uh, let's uh, do a quick, I'll look it up for you. Um, see what we're talking about today the best teams always have the most fun in whatever they're doing so 
just a reminder, like, they better be having fun. But and I'll remind them today that we, I'm all about having fun, but the building block of that is, number one, you have to compete. If you don't compete, you're not having fun, and I will not allow them to have fun because that is not fun. So they'll learn and understand that, and they do a great job of this, as you guys know, but the message today would just be reminding them about our competitive spirit and how it starts with that, and then while we're in that competitive mode, it can also be fun. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about like the energy of this week from the guys and some of the things you've heard the players talking about? I know you say they lead the dugout and they play a lot of leadership roles. So what have you heard you know, them kind of talking about within that group? So um, I've heard them talk about KPP and the fans, about how electric it'll be. Um, they, they've, they've mentioned that. And um, uh, they've mentioned uh, the dugout. We're having a team over my house, which is something we typically do. Um, multiple times a year we just have them over our house and we feed them and just let them hang out we'll have all the families and the kids running around and we have a, a lake in the back if they want to swim or fish and just let them all hang out they we have a, a pickleball court we spray painted in our cul-de-sac so if they want to play pickleball whatever throw the football with the kids jump on a trampoline whatever just let them just be with each other and be with us outside of just on the field um, but uh, so they'll, they'll do that. I know they're going to meet with the dugout. Trevor Fitz has done a great job meeting with those guys. So I know that he's going to have a little meeting with the guys on the bench on Thursday. So I'm looking forward to seeing what more fun things they'll come up with um, about ways to try to help our team, whether it's a, the camo cap stack and then the blue one, you know, the way they did that. And then we put the cowboy hat in there. I saw that. That was good. So um, but they'll do anything they can to try to help us win and uh, help one of their teammates to be in a better spot that it's competing. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to be talking about. Nick, what does uh, Oregon State do well as a baseball team? Everything. Like, they are legitimately as well-rounded team as, like, we'll face. I think they've only lost 14 games all year when you think about that. So they pitch at a high level, um, a super high level. They have a, a unique guy on the back end who can throw sidearm. They've got all the different arm slots. They defend the field well. They can... They bunt, they steal offensively, they can score in a bunch of different ways. And um, like I mentioned, they have a, a pitching staff that really knows how to pitch. So, uh, which is to be expected, right? Like when you get to this point, this is what you would think. The teams that could, are super well-rounded are gonna be able to do it and they can do all of those things well. Going off that, you, I think there are two frontline guys, both have a sub 3-3 three, three year array. What have you seen from those two? Well, the, fr the first guy, I mean, I lost the game all year, you know, and he went through a stretch there where he didn't pitch some. You know, but he is seven and zero, and the fastball moves. He's got velocity. He's got off-speed pitches, and um, they make it really hard on hitters. So um, they don't they don't lose many games with those guys. So we'll have our hands full, much like with our guys. You know, it's very similar to the guys that we have. We don't lose a lot of games when those guys are starting. So it'll be a, a great matchup. Nick, Oregon State comes in as you know with a lot of baseball tradition, and you've worked at a spot that has a lot. You're building your own now. Is that a tangible? Is that something as tangible? Uh, does it go out the window after the first pitch? I mean, how does that figure in, if at all? Yeah, so, you know, we were just having a very similar conversation with Coach Madison um, and Coach Cousy and the rest of our coaching staff just upstairs. Um, you guys know this. Coach leads us in a Bible study every week. He's done it for eight years, and we just talk baseball. We pick his brain. We tell stories. And um, we were just talking about how, um, you know, this year the West Coast is maybe not as highly represented, you know, in the postseason as it's been, especially when Coach was coaching, you know. So, you know, as every year it goes and flows and up and down, you know, um, the thing I've always said is you want to have guys in your program that have experience because once that game starts, they don't remember that and they don't know that I competed against Oregon State against Michael Conforto, right? Like I remember playing them in Omaha back in 2013 and it's like, well, Michael Conforto is not playing for them the same way Evan White's not in our lineup anymore. You know what I mean? To where you just, you gotta go at it like team versus team. So yes, have they been to Omaha? Have they won national championships? Yes, they have, you know? And, but unfortunately, um, or fortunately for us, those guys aren't playing on this team. This is an Oregon State team that's trying to create their own, you know, identity and their own legacy, much like we are. You know, the thing that I have peace about with our team, and I think it's shown so far, is we do have a lot of guys back from a year ago that have been in this position. So I would say that I would lean more that plays maybe a bigger factor than maybe what some other teams or programs have done maybe 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago is maybe some of the guys that you have in their program. And they have some really good players that have experience as well.
your team has been incredible in rallying from huge deficits, small deficits, whatever. It's that opening game to win the first one so you don't have to scramble as much. We just comment on how vital winning the first one is to put the pressure on someone else. Yeah, you definitely, that's um, obviously something that every team in the Supers want to do. You know, to where you just feel like, all right, now we got two games to win one, as opposed to I got to win the next two. So it's absolutely important. And, you know, in a lot of ways, it's much like an SEC weekend to where you're trying to win every single weekend, right? Like it doesn't matter if you win the first one and then you win the next two, or if you win the first one, lose the middle one and win the next one. Ultimately, at the end of the day, you've got to win the series. So however that goes. And when you look at our team this year, we've done it both ways. We've done it both ways. So to be able to draw from that success, you know, in those experiences, whether we don't win the first game and now we got to win the next two, we've been there, done that. Or we win the first one, we lose the second one, then you got to win the third one. So the piece I have as a coach is we've been through both sides of that and against really good teams. And we've done it either way against really good teams. So the team will be able to draw from that experience. Right, one more, guys, and then we'll get Grant up here. You talked about um, earlier this year about being able to score in a variety of ways. How does it's kind of loaded, and I know we can go down a rabbit hole. On yeah, that, sure. But, but how how does it present itself? Maybe on the, the small ball side of things, is it as easy as Ryan getting on early and like he did that? You know, went first to third pretty quickly the other day. Uh, how difficult is it to take a you know bat out of a big hitter's hand to have him bunt somebody over that kind of thing? Yeah. Well, this team is very unselfish, and you know, there's a lot of times that you've seen us call offensive timeouts. Right, we're one of the few teams I've realized even that we play against, not as many teams use those, and you get three. So a lot of times we'll, especially um, with me being at third base, with the opportunity to talk to the entire coaching staff. So we all talk first. If you've ever seen, it's been scripted. The three of us will talk before we talk to the players and we get the players feedback and we get the input and then we put the play on. So uh, there's a lot of things that go into that. And um, when we're, trying to decide what is the best way it is actually a really good feeling as a coach to know that hey we could do a lot of things here we could bunt we could fake bunt steal we could steal we could hit and run we could slash we could slash hit and run there's just a lot of things that we can do we can hit we can just go hit we can do fake breaks we can put fake steals we can try to move infielders so we're setting up all those things in those timeouts and as a coach that's a good feeling when you feel like you have options i don't know if there anybody here that is like coached or just in life in general when you just don't feel like you have a lot of options and you feel stuck it's not a good feeling you know so also i think that provides pressure on our opponents so as a coach yes we're about to face some really good arms Right. And we've done that all year and we've been able to and we've had to score in a bunch of different ways. So this week has been a great week of practice so far. Yesterday, we went through all of our plays at first base, all of our offensive plays at second base, like just reshaping and trying to sharpen those skills to be prepared. So when it, if and when it does come up that our players are prepared and we want them to feel prepared. So um, the ability to score in a bunch of different ways, I fully expect that to be on display this weekend, especially against a really good pitching staff. Grant didn't get a chance to speak with you after the game, the clincher the other day. Will you just, and how many times have you watched the play where you ran into left field and became a second left field? <laughs> a couple, a couple definitely. Um, you know, I've had it sent to me a bunch of times, but, you know, obviously seen it. And, uh, yeah, I just can't, I can't stop thinking about what was going through my head. It, it felt like it was going in slow motion, but, you know, obviously didn't look like that. So it's awesome. Is that the best play you've ever made? Not in the normal shortstop position? Um, probably. I actually made one, you know, at my old school against Mitch Daly at his old school <laughs> that was almost exactly like that. Um, it's kind of weird, but, you know, yeah, those two might be top two. Can I interject for a second? Grant won't mind me saying this, but he and I were texting the other night when the play was number one on Sports Center. And I was like, how many times in your life do you have such a good game that I can legitimately say which play? Was the one that <laughs> put the highlight on. How cool was it though to see it number one on that? Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, it was awesome. Uh, fortunately, my family was here, so we got to watch it on TV together. So it was a special moment. It's something, you know. As a kid, I used to watch top ten like probably everybody else, and 
is a highlight of my day all the time. So, you know, just living that out is pretty cool. How often does your family get up here from Albuquerque and get to watch it? A, a good bit, fortunately. Yeah, they've been they've been up here a couple of times. Um, they uh, they are coming this weekend again. Actually, they're b bouncing back, so I'm grateful for that. And uh, I know they had some troubles getting home, but they're turning right back back around on Friday and coming back out here. So it'll be awesome. Brad, you mentioned Mitch, who of course filled in for you when you were hurt. But describe him as a third baseman, as a team as a guy who knows about playing infield. What has he added? To your infield, having another shortstop essentially at third base, and you're all being able to communicate and things like that. Yeah, hundred percent. He's definitely an, another shortstop, just like Petey. And uh, you know, I know he's played all three positions: second base, shortstop, and third base in his career. And you know, he's succeeded at, at all three. But you know, just have the confidence with him over there is awesome. And uh, you know, I think he complements our our infield so well. You know, I said it before. I think we have the best infield in the country, and and he's a, a huge piece of that. I was going to say, you guys have that rep now. Uh, clearly, that means a lot to you, doesn't it? That reputation is the best in the country. Yeah, of course. Uh, we all pride ourselves on on defense a lot. I remember PD the other night saying that he even thinks he's a defense first player, and and for him to say that's pretty pretty impressive. But uh, yeah, I think we have a solid defense, and I think other people think that too. Coach Benjamin was just talking about how important Brian Higgins you know, is to everything you guys do in the dugout and the leadership. Just as a as a teammate, what have you seen from him since you got here? Yeah, he's a vital piece to this team. Um, Four year guy who's been here since the beginning, who who's seen it all, and you know he's a staple staple to our team who gels everybody together. And there's a reason he's the dugout captain. Coach Mignon doesn't doesn't take that role lightly, and uh, that's a huge piece to our team as well. Just the dugout, but um, yeah, a guy who's been here for four years, seen it all, seen the growth of this program, and and having success now, I can't be happier for him. Grant, going back to Albuquerque, your two top pictures are from there. Have yeah. you? Played against, I see it was different high schools. Do you have any battles with them back then? And what do you know about those two guys? Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, I don't get to face a lot of New Mexican baseball players, but uh, <laughs> this weekend will be cool. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're good friends. Um, me, Aiden, and uh, uh, Jacob are all great friends. And uh, it'll be cool. I know they're, they're really good. I faced them a couple times in high school. I know they've grown a lot since then and gotten a lot better. So they're having success this year. And yeah, it'll be fun. The attitude and the outlook you have right now compared to right now a year ago, being at home instead of going to LSU, yeah, to maybe being the favorite when last year you guys were not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Last year looking up at, at who we we're about to play was tough, but um, this year, you know, just going through it a second time, there's definitely a, a calming, a calming feeling to that, and also you know confidence. Uh, having it at home is huge too with our fans, how they've been supporting us lately and you know all year has been incredible i think we definitely have the advantage on that um but yeah just the work that it took all year to to get into this moment you know nothing's going to change and uh having it at home will be will be awesome everybody knows that among your myriad of injuries <clears throat> you've been dealing with a foot injury it doesn't look in terms of the way you're running like it's bothering you that much has it affected you on defense or offense um it's definitely feeling better uh, it's definitely feeling better. Uh, the adrenaline of the moments that we're in this time of year definitely help a lot. But yeah, no, I'm feeling good and uh, probably the best I've felt in a long time. Wow. Yeah. Grant, Coach uh, Mengio just talked a lot about you guys living in the present, right? And not the past or the future. And what does that look like for you guys as players, especially here this week when you guys are entering a big time moment coming up here on Saturday? What does it look like for you guys as captains to kind of keep things cool? Yeah, kind of the, just the same message that we've had all year. Um, no game is bigger than any other game in our eyes. And obviously the, the situations are going to change. They're amplified. But in terms of the way that we approach the game, our preparation is going to stay the same. Uh, if we have any anything to tweak out this week, we'll, we'll get it done and then um, go into the game and treat it like a normal game. But uh, I guess do you do want to win this one a little bit more than than, you know, games earlier in the season just because of the just because of the moment. But uh, nothing different, no different message from, from the leaders on the team, from the coaches on the team, which is something that I think is a big, uh, a strong suit of this team. Is that a unique characteristic of just from other teams you've been on? For you guys to be able to just focus, is, are you guys better at that than maybe some of your other past experiences? Is that extreme? Yeah, I definitely think so. Uh, our ability to, you know, we joke about expiring at midnight, but, you know, it's not really a joke, to be honest. <laughs> um, as soon as the clock hits midnight, we're focused on what it takes to win, and we're not as concerned of, of just the end result of winning. And Coach Minch does a really good job of providing the things that we need to do to win and not just you know talking about winning. And I think that's a big difference.
How much do you study timeouts that, that you all will use? Is there a typical way those go? Or they bring the ideas or, or players kind of chipping in what they think? Yeah, um, it's kind of funny. I can kind of tell when Coach Ammo wants to take a timeout because you can his body language kind of changes and he's like you can tell he's like analyzing the situation and then he'll kind of just start walking out and and call timeout. But yeah, so the coaches will meet first. Us players will will kind of meet, talk about maybe if it's a new pitcher, what the guys on base have seen um, to try to help you um, we'll take a break, kind of talk uh, talk with each other, and then the coaches will come up and. It's honestly kind of a conversation. It's not like them telling us what to do. It's like, what do you, what do you think about it here? Um, they get our feedback, and then we kind of make a final decision and go from there. And I know other fans at other places and other teams hate those meetings, <laughs> but you know, it's good for us. What is, is, it, more is, than it tough, on his way down. is it tough when, when it, you, maybe you're being asked to buy and, and you're one to hit? I mean, is there any, ever any pushback or anything like that? No, no. Um, <laughs> If, especially in these moments, you know, whatever the, the team needs is everybody's going to do. I'm not just the only one that's going to say that. Uh, I mean, Ron has 20 homers this year. He'll lay down a bunt if, if that's what the situation calls for. Um, that, that's a, a strength of this team. Like Coach Minch was saying, you know, we have a lot of different ways we can win and a lot of different things we can do to win. And, uh, yeah, so any moment, anything that the team needs, everybody will do it. When you play a team, the, the, uh, seven days, six days between games, how much – does that kind of help this team health-wise and maybe just in terms of recovery, just getting in and being able to focus on that next series? Yeah, the break the break uh, definitely helps. Um, but, you know, at this point in the season when you've played so many games, it kind of becomes a routine. It, it's not a huge difference. So we'll, uh, we'll approach this weekend the same, and it'll be fun. When you've never played a team before, how do you study their pitchers, their tendencies? How much video do you have to go through in a short window? Yeah, so uh, I, I, our coaching our coaching staff, I don't think anybody watches more video than they do. Um, you know, I've been around it a lot more this year, and uh, the amount of preparation that they put into each game and each opponent, uh, I've never seen another coaching staff do as much. So, you know, it kind of takes a lot of pressure off us as players, just putting our confidence in them and trusting what they see. We, we don't watch a ton of video ourselves. It'll, it'll just be maybe a day before the game or just right before the game. Um, but all week we're kind of talking about what our approach will be off the different pitchers, but we're, we're putting a lot of our trust in them. And, uh, you know, just how the season's gone, um, we, can, we can be confident in that. And Nick has talked more than once in settings like this about the Kennesaw weekend. Looking back, what was going on with your team then compared to now? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, I think obviously we had some injuries. We had a lot of things going differently and I think it was just a mindset shift uh, we didn't have the dugout as involved you know we we didn't really have our true identity as a team yet and I think uh, coach Minge and the coaching staff kind of identified that and challenged us in different ways and kind of morphed into what we are now and you know without that weekend though we did lose I don't think we'd be in this situation I was gonna say looking back can you believe that it unfolded that way yeah I'm actually grateful it did <laughs> um, you know Losing isn't always a bad thing. You, you can lose from you can uh, learn from losing, and uh, we have a saying for loss, and it's learning opportunity, stay strong. Uh, that's what Coach Minch brings to the team, and uh, you know I think that's a prime example that weekend. We have a lot of sayings. Yeah, yeah we do. Yeah we do. They they help. They do help. I do like them. Yeah, uh, it means a lot because it's it's kind of funny, but I I think it's more than just obviously the dugout captain. I think it's somebody that can just kind of keep the vibes good in the dugout and being that person that other others can rely on means a lot to me. So are you the guy that kind of comes up with everything or do you kind of go off of your teammates or how does that work? It's definitely collective. Guys will be coming up to me um, laughing because they have this crazy idea and I, I'm kind of like the veto or like the yeah let's go. <laughs> so there's definitely been some things that I can't say on here for some <laughs> ideas from some of the guys but yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Ryan, I remember the first pregame meeting of the year down in Spartanburg, and Nick was talking about dugout energy, and he looked right at you and said basically something like, are you ready to go again? Had that been your plan all along? You wanted to do it again this year? Yeah, absolutely, because I think 
It's just harder when you're younger to run the dugout, obviously, because trying to get older guys to listen to you is difficult. Uh, <laughs> but now that I'm older and I've been here for four years, I feel like guys trust and believe in what I say and don't just shrug it off and get annoyed. So it's been pretty cool to see how much everybody's bought into what we do. How do you feel when you have to go down to the bullpen and get ready and you have to hoist the mantle on somebody else? Is it like a big decision for you? Uh, it's usually just whoever's been loud and having fun that day. Um, I've been giving it to Patrick Herrera and Ben Higdon in the past, so whoever wants it. Ryan, how do you reflect on your career as a whole here with the injuries and, and maybe not you know, being the Friday ace that you thought you were going to be for a while, but then having this huge leadership role that you developed the last two years? Yeah, I think you know college has uh, helped me realize that I'm a lot more than just baseball. Um, so. At first, I was basing whether I was happy or not strictly off my results of how I threw, and I was getting injured and stuff like that, so that obviously wasn't working very well. Um, and then once I realized I can have a much bigger impact in the locker room and uh, with the team as well as on the field, uh, that stuff kind of stopped mattering as much to me. So, you know, I a lot of people from the outside may look at it and think of it as unsuccessful, but I feel like I've grown a lot and become a much better person and just everything, every aspect of my life has gotten better. So I, I love the leadership role I'm in. That being said, you're obviously still very effective when yeah. they have you to this year. How much are you kind of dialed in on the mound right now? Too? Yeah, yeah, I feel really good on my mount, on the mound right now. Um, you know, me and the bullpen um, has been, I've kind of been all over the place this year doing every role. Um, and throughout my career, there's not really a role that I haven't done. So, you know, just trusting in the experience I have and, you know, knowing that the younger guys are looking to me in a lot of those situations gives me a lot of confidence. Is the role not having a defined role? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I think just kind of being ready for whatever situation. Um, and I take that as a compliment from the coaching staff because it's not easy to do uh, to go in the fourth inning some, gate, some days and then go in the ninth the next day. Just keeping your mind ready for whenever, I guess that is the role, yeah. <laughs> As a staff, how do you guys approach a Super Regional maybe differently than the regional format, knowing it's only three games? Yeah, I, I think this one's a little easier to approach because it's just like another weekend series. Um, you know, we have the same, same guys and we're used to playing three games and um, this time we could only play two. So, <laughs> yeah, I think the, the key is just win game one, win game two, and then See what happens. Grant said he doesn't. They don't. You guys don't really look at video that much of the opposition. But as a pitcher, if you're watching a game and you see, wow, the guy's got a hold of the swing, or certain pitches work. Do, how much do you prepare on each batter going into a game or a series? Yeah. So the the players ourselves don't watch a lot of video, but our coaching staff watches a ridiculous amount of video on our opponent, and they figure out all those things and. You know, obviously it's it's on the scouting reports and stuff, and some guys like to look at it, some guys don't like to look at it. Um, I personally, I I trust in the coach's research, and if he's calling a pitch, I'm, I'm trusting that he's done his homework and uh, that, like you said, there's a hole in the swing or something like that. So um, they definitely put in the time doing that. That way we just go out and compete and don't overthink it. Ryan, since you're as well-connected as anybody who's a captain on the team, emotional leader, how are the emotions on the team collectively right now? Really good, <laughs> really good. Uh, this team, we, we believe in ourselves, and I think that's one of the main reasons we've been so successful. Um, especially, you know, Coach Minch talks about don't listen to outside noise and all that, and he said that from the beginning. And um, I think that's helped us really just be comfortable within our own skin and know how good we are. So everybody's really excited. Um, I'm sure we'll have those pre-game jitters. Um, it's hard not to when you got 10,000 people or whatever playing, playing there for you. So, um, yeah, but we're all really excited and really confident. Yeah, obviously it's, you know, you guys haven't won one of these yet. Once you get the game started, then it's just another game. But what do you feel like it takes to win one of these? Yeah, so that's something we'll, do, we'll discuss in the scouting report. But I do really think it's just really important to – realize the game's the exact same. It means more on paper, but if we do what we've been doing all year, then we should be able to win. So um, it's just important with what we do and not being too consumed in everything outside of the game.
uh, the game doesn't change at all. So just remembering that will be huge for us. We've talked a lot about how Oregon State, similar to you guys, do whatever it takes, bunt, steal. How do you, do you approach the game different when you're playing teams like this? Um, I'd say not not really for me. <laughs> uh, I'm just up there trying to throw, throw the pitch where it's called. But it's definitely in the back of our mind with uh, our positioning on the field, whether we have to pull our third baseman in a little bit for the threat of the bunt and stuff, things like that. Um, but we'll definitely hammer home and practice throughout the week, whether it's a pitcher being quick to the plate so they can't steal on us, just things like that. Um, the little things definitely change a little bit. But. Ryan, you know that runs are precious. Right. The further you go into the postseason, mm -hmm. what does it mean to a pitcher to see his teammates go out there and you know, maybe manufacture a run, a, a walk, a steal, bunt, whatever it may take to just get you a run? Yeah, that, that means a lot because it just never feels like we're out of it, ever. And that gives pitchers a lot of confidence because even if you do struggle a little bit, you know they're going to pick you up. And uh, that's been one of the most important things for this team is just our trust in each other. I know if I struggle a little bit, the next arm who comes out of the bullpen is going to pick me up and then the offense is going to pick me up and we'll probably win. So, you know, it's kind of been like that all year. and It's super important. The chatter in the locker room when you saw that 9 p.m. start. On <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I kind of saw it coming. I I know we were playing a West Coast team, so um, it's all about the, the money <laughs> and TV time. I think it's going to be really cool, though. I think Ryan, it's going to be cool. Ryan, obviously, you know you guys are in the middle of making something special happen. But what is? Do you guys kind of recognize the moment? as you guys are going through it, just realizing like, okay, this is at home, right? And home field advantage, you guys always want it. In pro sports, we've seen the last like month or so that home court, home field, home ice hasn't really mattered, but in college it means so much. So do you, do you guys feel that this weekend? And are you going to feel it coming up? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but like you said, it's kind of one of those things where the, once the first pitch is thrown, that kind of goes away. But um, me and my roommates, I, I live with, Nolan, Ryan Nicholson, and uh, Evan Byers, and we'll just be sitting on the couch after the regional win, and we're like, wow, that was really cool. <laughs> and then we, we started talking about this week, and we're like, oh, this is going to be really cool. So, you know, we're, we're super pumped, and we, we recognize how, how lucky we are and how cool this is, and that it's not just a every year thing or hasn't been in the past. So, yeah, we, we, we know it's a big deal, but um, that's part of what makes the, week, the work throughout the week so important. You know, he was on the road last year. What, what can you learn from last year and being in the Super Regional that you bring to this year's Super Yeah, uh, luckily, I think we played in the toughest environment in the country last year. So, um, and against someone who's thrown in the major leagues right now. So I, I don't know what better experience we could have. You know, what, what could prepare us better than playing that last year? Um, I think just having having the confidence and, you know, having our crowd behind us and um, not facing Paul schemes. <laughs> uh, no, but I, I, I think just having a, a bunch of veterans that experience that and, and you know, pretty much going from the hardest situation possible to earning a right to do it at home, I think it's pretty cool. So. I was talking earlier about your career, ups and downs, but in that window, you've seen this program go from the valley you know, to, to as, as good as it's ever been. What has that been like for you emotionally to be a part of that as a four-year guy, as a leader, mm -hmm. and bringing a lot of guys with you? Yeah. Um, I mean, Coach Minge, during our team meeting at the beginning of the year, he always talks about uh, how we have our life and our expectations and we just expect it to go like this. And reality is always, you know, up, down, up, down, up, down. So after he told us that um, and after four years I could not believe in something more now <laughs> like it's super true um, each year though we found a way to keep get the uh, get the team morale better and better and better and better and my freshman year there were things that made us really happy like when whenever we made it to Hoover we were pumped up for each other because we get to play more and you know the goals just slowly became more believable um, we started to get guys to completely buy in to what we were doing and uh, 
with Coach Minge, I think it's really just about if you buy into what he wants to do and what Coach Rozelle and the other coaches have in mind, then you're going to be really good. Um, and it, we have a group of guys that has bought in, and I think that's why we're, we've been so successful.